Today, we're doing a case study for the camera of one of my favorite shooters, Nuclear Throne. Independent studio of Lambeer is known for their immersive game feel, and a massive contributor to this is how great their cameras control. We're going to dive into how you might implement Nuclear Throne's camera system into Unity. Let's take a look at how this camera works. Like in most games, the camera in Nuclear Throne follows the player around, but it doesn't just lock the center of the camera to the player. The camera juts out in front of the player so that they can see more of what's in front of them. This allows them to get more out of their limited screen real estate by moving the camera to show what the player actually needs to see. When we move the mouse around a bit, we can see that the camera actually gets further away from the player the further the cursor is from them. This not only looks good, but it also means the camera won't be wildly flipping around when the cursor is close to the player. The other aspect of the camera we'll be tackling today is its screen shake when shooting. Every time you fire a gun, the screen shakes a little bit. If you look closely, you can see it actually moves back in the opposite direction of your shot. This effect really sells the recoil of the gun. Now that we have a clear picture of what we want to do, let's head into Unity. I've already set up a basic top-down shooter controller. I'm going to assume that anyone watching this knows how to make a character move around and shoot, so I won't be covering that in this video. If you'd like, you can download the Unity package below and dig through how my player works. Keep in mind that this is only put together for example purposes and doesn't do a lot of stuff that a more complete character controller would do, like proper collision handling, for example. I've laid out some walls similar to the way a nuclear throne level might look. If you'd like me to make a video on how to procedurally generate levels like nuclear throne does, go ahead and leave a comment and like down below. Let's get down to the main event, the camera script. At the top, we have a few variables. Most of these will be set elsewhere, but there are a couple more notable ones. We have a reference to the transform of the player, which we'll assign in the inspector. Camera distance tells the camera how far away it should be when our mouse is at the edge of the screen. Smooth time determines how quickly it will move to its target position. In start, we're setting up the default target for the camera, and capturing its C position so we can make sure it stays in place on that dimension. In our update loop, we'll set a few variables before updating the camera's position. To get the mouse position, we'll use camera to viewport to find its position on the screen. This will give us two numbers between 0 and 1 based on its distance from the corner of the screen. We'll do a bit of vector math to adjust it to read as an offset from the center of the screen. The next part is optional, but it will make it so the distance remains consistent around the edges of the screen, so that putting the cursor on the corner doesn't give a longer view. Let's move on to updating our target. We want to get the offset from the mouse by using the position we found earlier and multiplying it by our camera distance variable. We then add that to the player's position. We also want to move the target's Z position to Z start. We don't want the camera moving all the way up to the player's position on Z, since the player area would then go out of view. Now we're ready to update the camera's position. We're going to use a smooth damp to handle the interpolation for us. We just input the camera's position and the position where we want it to be, as well as a reference vector3 variable and the smooth time variable we set up at the top of the script. Then we apply our new position to our transform. With all that in place, we should have half of our system done. You can now test it in the editor right after you drag the player into its field on the camera script. The camera should now reveal more in front of the player based on where the mouse is positioned and jut out further depending on how far out the cursor is. Now that that's done, we can move on to the screen shake. We'll make a public method that we can call whenever we shoot. Since we're going to base the screen shake on the direction we've shot, we'll need that information. We'll also have parameters saying how far to shake and for how long. 
This way we can determine these from where we shoot, and they can be different depending on things like which gun is being used, even though this example only has one gun. We'll make sure that we know that the screen is shaking, and pass in all of the variables from our parameters. We'll want to go into Update Target Position, and insert a line adding the shake offset to the return vector. Back in our update loop, we'll set shake offset to a new method I'm calling update shake. In that, we'll first want to check if we're not shaking, in which case we'll return zero. This part also takes care of ending our shake after its time has run out. To get our offset, we'll want to multiply the shake vector by the shake magnitude. You could implement some kind of random element here, but I found that the smoothing on the camera counteracted anything I tried. The major way around this is to have less accurate guns, which would pass the randomness directly onto the screen shake. You could also toggle the smoothing of the camera based on whether it's shaking. My effect is so short that I decided not to do this, but you can try it out yourself and see if you like it. The only thing left to do is call the shake method from where we shoot. My player controller already has a reference stored to the camera script, so I just call shake from where my script shoots. I pass in a vector that goes in the opposite direction of the bullet, as well as magnitude and length parameters that felt right for this gun. With that done, we now have a working camera system. There are a lot more aspects to the way Nuclear Throne's camera works, but we've accomplished what we set out to do, and I'm pleased with the result. If you want to expand the system, try adding randomness to the gun's accuracy and passing that into the camera's shake. Thanks for watching this video all the way through to the end. Let me know what you thought in the comments section and share this video with anyone who might be interested. If you want to keep up with my new uploads, subscribe here and follow me on Twitter. Ludum Dare 40 was this weekend. My friend Noah and I made a crazy game for it called Disaster Deli. You stack up sandwiches to meet customer orders, but the higher the sandwich gets, the more ridiculous it is to control. There's a link down below and you can play it in your browser. We had a lot of fun making this game, so I hope you enjoy playing it.